Welcome back to Combi Life. We're on the road for a month-long road trip through Ireland with myself, Ben, local lass, Faith, and adventure dogs, Alaska and George. Our plan is to live and work as digital nomads in our 1973 B-Dub Combi, whilst exploring the Emerald Isle and attempting not to drown in the process. Oh, an Irish day. Join us for this Irish adventure and many more to come. And don't forget to subscribe. From Central Ireland, we push northwest bound towards the majestic coastline and the stunning County Sligo, where we were looking to make camp. Sun is shining and we have made it to the west coast of Ireland. Oh, It is stunning, look at it. Seriously, look how beautiful this is. We're actually looking for a place to camp for the evening um, and somewhere that we can work because we've got to do a bit of work. Uh, Faith's going to be doing her digital nomadism thing and she's got to log into the office. But we've really got to get internet. It's actually really hard to get internet in Ireland. It's like the connectivity is pretty awful. It's red, especially like when you're in the, the wilds of the country. There's no signal out here. And uh, tomorrow we will have to find somewhere to do some work. But for now, this is our garden. This part of Ireland, oh, I can't wait to drive down the west coast. We're in for a real treat, I'm sure. Just this is the first little glimpse of like beautiful mountains and and the scenery that Ireland has to offer. And we're just getting started, so I'm sure there's some amazing sights to come. Morning, guys. Morning. I've got to say, this is definitely one of the nicer places that I've woken up in a van for a while. Public toilet down here. It's a waterfall over there. It's a beautiful lake here. These hills. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay here because Faith's work, although able to be done from the van, requires a stable internet connection. So we relocated closer to a cell tower in a public sports field in the town of Sligo which the dogs didn't seem to mind one bit. And to be fair, it was a pretty good place to be hanging out for the day. Nice. You see what I did there? And then go down with your legs straight or like, so you're 90 degree your legs. Yeah, and now come come back. Yeah, good, good. Can you come back? Oh, yeah. Look at you. Strong. Certain parts of life on the road through Ireland were getting expensive fast, but we did find ways to offset the cost and keep our mobile lifestyle affordable. Oh, this is uh, kind of a creepy place to stay, but we really need water. We really need a shower. We were on the road and we saw that there was a, a church that we could pull into and, and get water and have a shower and spend the night. But we're practically parked in a graveyard. It's not ideal. Hopefully that's okay until the morning. My gosh, that church looks so old. I've never seen it a church. So old looking. Find a tap. Have you seen a church from graveyard like this before? I think you've seen a church like this, I don't think. Wow, so interesting. Such a strange old church with no glass windows. I bet there's some history there. I wonder how old it is. We've already filled up our main water tank on the outside of the combi with the underslung water tank. Now we're filling up our drinking water. I've got to say, we're not entirely sure that this is actually potable water, but we can put it into our drinking water system because we have our UV water filter system. Just be careful if you're on the road and you're getting water from unknown sources. Don't do like we do if you don't have a UV water filter system. You should have one though. If you can, you should have one. One more bottle? Yeah. Well, you good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> good, because I started pouring without asking if you'd actually put the end of the funnel in the bottle. I could have been wearing this water. <laughs> yeah, if you are on the road and you are stopping to get water, 
in random places like this and sometimes you have to because in Ireland there's not a lot of places that we found so far that you can get drinking water. There's a link in the description of the video for $100 off a Akiva water filter system if you want one. Comes highly recommended. At this point we were headed to the beach, but as you will find out if you plan on road tripping through Ireland for a month, there will come a time when the Irish weather listens to your plans and then laughs in your face. Ready guys, let's go! Ooh. Hi! Hi! Come to Ireland in the summertime, she said. It'll be nice, she said. Oh my days, they are some wet dogs. How is it out there? John an Irish day. Here you go, up in your bed. You too. Oh my god. How are you doing, Lester? Are you, are you upset? <laughs> she's, not, she's not happy. She's not talking to you. What? It's not, I didn't make it rain. Lester, come on. We talked about this. I'm not in charge of the weather. George, you're more forgiving, aren't you? You'd like a good wet adventure. All weather dog. There's no way I'm not gonna like soak this fan, I'm sorry. It's so wet. You're making the tea. Welcome to tea. Yeah. It's actually turned out to be quite a nice evening, which was completely surprising given how the first part of the day turned out. It was horrible earlier on. We found a lovely little uh, woodland park because there's a bit of a tropical storm coming through at the moment. We were hoping to head to the coast and do a bit of surfing and there is massive waves there but it's so windy, it just would be really unpleasant to, to be camped there. What the heck? It's a snail. Nice spot this one, huh? This is, this is one of your best. This is one of your best spots, easily. It's so good here. And there's toilets. Yeah, she's only saying that because there's toilets, but it's actually very nice. So uh, we're gonna go for a little walk. I think there might be something fun for us to discover at the end of this trail, if we can find it. Let's have a look. You know where we're going? I've got to say I am very impressed with Ireland and the facilities here and all of the parks and greenlands that we've been staying at. Everything is just like really well made and um, there's exercise machines in all of the parks. It's just really, really nice. I had to get new shoes after this morning's torrential rain because while they were Jersey waterproof and UK waterproof, they were not Ireland waterproof and I was walking around very wet feet for about eight hours today so they're in the bin and we got new shoes i also have green shoes specially bought for this island trip um, and they're gore-tex if you can only really have one or two pairs of shoes in a van get gore-tex shoes they're so so good you never have to worry about having wet feet again someone obviously knows how to carve that's so nice wow what a carving i know the guy who carved this yeah yeah, he was a hoot. Oh dear. <laughs> this is what I have to put up with. Oh wow, look at this. How cool is that? This is Moor Hall, an Irish country manor that was set on fire by an armed anti-treaty group during the Civil War in winter 1923. One eyewitness account from that fateful night reads, it was then pitch dark and pouring rain. Imagine my horror when I got to the hill overlooking the garden and saw the whole house one seething mass of flames. Huge tongues of fire were shooting out of every door and window. Clouds of sparks like snowflakes were being carried by the wind. I at once knew that there was no hope. Even if I had had help, nothing could be done. A fire brigade would be powerless, so firmly had the fire gripped the entire building. Fearing that the out officers would soon catch, I let out all of the livestock and felt as one does when standing by the open grave of a very dear friend. At six o'clock in the morning, the roof went in with one huge crash.
These days the grounds and walled garden are open to the public and is a great place to visit, but we ended up being here for much longer than we expected. I've been in this car park now for this is the third day. It wasn't exactly our plan when we came here, we were just trying to escape the remnants of a tropical storm and, and take some shade and shelter from the storm in the trees. However, Faith unfortunately has a kidney infection, so she's on antibiotics and needs to rest and be near a toilet, which there is one here. After three days of resting in that car park, I'm pleased to say that Faith was feeling a little bit better, so we ventured on, now just as friends, hoping the worst of the storm had passed. It's definitely the windiest conditions that I've driven in in a, in a while. I just went around the right hand bend, steering left, because the wind was pushing me around the, the bend. These flags are about ready to ping off the uh, flag poles here, look. The Ukrainian flag. What flag's that? Mayo. That's Mayo, that's this county, right? Mm hmm. It's interesting because, like, if you travel somewhere like America, you see American flags everywhere. And like a lot of countries you'll see the, the national flag, but in Ireland you don't really see too many Irish flags, but you see loads of county flags. Yeah, especially in Mayo. Really? Yeah. A lot of county pride in Mayo. It's, it's, a, it's a county to be proud of. Look at this building here. Are you ready for it to get even windier? Knocked out by the door, it's so windy. You gotta be careful when you pee in, you pee in your own mouth. Mm. I've got to be honest with you, it was nice to smell the salt air of the coast, but this was no weather to be outside exploring, and we were grateful for the sanctuary of the combi. so much. We awoke to more of the same weather, which I've got to say does make van life hard, especially with the dogs. You have a nice Irish breakfast, Ben. Would you say this is a typical Irish breakfast? Mm, maybe. Depends on the day. Brown bread. Irish butter. And then we've got Organic Irish honey. You call it brown bread, but it's soda bread to regular people, non-Irish people. Brown bread. Mm. So it's, it's always best to um, make be the one that makes breakfast and not have to do the steak dinner. It's much easier to just butter bread and pour honey on it. <laughs> Rude. Taste at home. Soda bread. Let's just say it had been long enough since our last shower, but it was still too cold and windy outside for our propane shower. So we resorted to bathing inside the bus. Ah! You're such a dick. Are you sure you don't want to do yours? It's fun. It doesn't look like fun. How oh, please. <laughs> you have up your head like a mummy. <laughs> Sure you don't want to go? Okay. Uh-oh. Good job. Thanks for the assist, hairdresser Ben. There's a feature as a hairdresser in there for you somewhere. This whole YouTube thing doesn't work out. Whilst the weather was so bad, and after several days of mostly being stuck inside... Just wearing waterproof trousers all the time now. We were starting to get a little bit of cabin fever, and the cracks in this van life dream were starting to show. The shower will be nice, but it's too cold in I really miss my house. It has blankets, and it's warm, and it has indoor plumbing, which, you know, you really take for granted until you don't have it anymore. 
Next stop for us is Ackle Island. You weren't kidding when you said the roads here were bad. Where the famous Ireland Wild Atlantic Way really starts to deliver. Look at this. But that Look at this. is a story for next time. This is absolutely stunning.